Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, you guys. So, this is my attempt to vlog. So, let's see how this goes. So, as y'all can see, I ain't dolled all the way up, but I'm getting there. I'm going to beat my face in the car. Getting ready to go to a Sister in Christ book signing. She released her book today. Book signing is tonight, so gotta go show your girl support. So I was like, let me take you guys with me. Show you what I do in my spare times when I'm not just rambling on. You feel what I'm saying? So her movement is aimed to impact, not impress, hence the shirt. But I am ready. I am ready to mingle. I am ready to help sell books. Ready to cop my book. And yeah, let's just be great together. Oh, you guys, look at Genesis. Genesis waiting for mommy. Yes, I named my car Genesis. And the scenes. Y'all don't want to see the author. What? Yes. She too fast. What? I'm telling y'all. I know, because I'm recording for my YouTube, oh, yeah, yeah. girl. Okay, don't, don't show me yet. Don't show, me yet. <laughs> don't show you yet. Don't show me yet. She's like, no, don't show me yet. <laughs> Hey, boo, what's up? Okay. Listen, she fine, though. Hey, little mama, what your name is? What your name is, little mama? Hey, y'all, y'all know y'all in the hood when y'all start seeing chickens. Y'all, y'all, y'all know y'all in the hood. But y'all, she fine, y'all. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready for her. Y'all ain't ready for her, but we'll be back. We'll be back. Okay. So I made it, y'all. Y'all know I'm black, so uh, praise the Lord. I did get here a little bit late, but we about to set up. This will be my partner in crime tonight. Say hello to the people. Hello. Well, you, I was eating salt, salted caramel brownie brittle, so please make sure I didn't sign in my mouth. Oh no, you you good? Please. Okay. Oh yeah. So hello. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. So yeah. All right. We were going to. She's she's coming soon. Yeah. So um. <laughs> this is my sister, y'all. My boo. Hello. So we we finna be live tonight. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's take the stuff out the car. Okay. All right. All right. We are literally waiting for the woman of the hour, y'all. It is a vibe in here. You hear me? A vibe. I don't know who made the food. I think I know who made the food and the little um, appetizers. Y'all, it was hitting. It hit the spot. Praise the Lord. What happened? Her wraps are bomb. Yeah, it was good, yeah. for real. It was good, I'm like, but you know, we're not trying to be greedy around these parts. I have my sister. I do want to show her, but she's like, it's, don't like the camera, it's, but. It's, I don't know. Just, I guess it's okay. Just make sure my neck is long so I don't look too chubby. <laughs> Say hey. Hi. Make sure y'all check her out on WordPress, y'all. I'm gonna drop it like right there. Down below. Yes, check her out, WordPress, y'all. So, I will be giving y'all snippets throughout the night, but I love y'all. Phones, um, something that you don't know. Um, and take a picture with them, and then you're going to hashtag Filthy Pearls. And I'm going to call you up and say, hey, do you know their person's name? Because we're going to be in here. Listen, she's all about aiming to impact, right? Yeah, okay. So, we're going to be in here, impacting, touching, whatever we do with each other, all right? So, go ahead and walk around. Ran up to me and told me, we learned about Jesus today. And I could tell by her smile she was so excited to learn about this man that she did not quite know yet, but 
She knew without a doubt for it to be true, because after all, mommy said so. That was the first time in my life that I looked into the eyes of a child and envied them, because she had no idea of what it feels like to doubt. What it feels like to have your entire belief system overloaded with skepticism. To never know the day that you would finally be able to live beyond the shadow of a doubt. I've lived in its darkness for so long. It seems like I have all the right questions. But never enough answers. And my faith is small enough to fit in the cracks of my palms. God. Every night I lay my head down to sleep. The city of my mind is attacked by a legion of questions. Threatening the living rooms of my sanity and holding them hostage. Can you help me? Last year, my grandmother laid in a hospital bed like a bus stop waiting for God to come pick her up. I had never seen such pain and such confidence living in the same eyes when she told me, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know who I belong to, and I was so happy for her. Something inside of me wished that somehow before she passed away, she could pass down her confidence in God to me like an old family picture. I remember sitting in the back row of a cold sanctuary, crying, because I desperately wanted what the preacher was saying to be true. But my doubts were preaching a sermon of their own, and the streams of my tears turned into oceans of frustration. I remember sitting in a college classroom and the only thing being tested is my faith in God. The only thing passing is my hope. Me and a backpack full of fear. Nowhere to go. No one to help me unpack. I sleep. I sleep but I never rest. These lines around my eyes are not wrinkles, they are maps that show you the winding roads that lead to my pain. I'm tired. I'm tired. And I'm longing for the day that I can place my fingers in his nail pierced hands because honestly I've considered quitting, but where will I go? Back. There's no home for the living in the land of the dead, so I keep pressing forward. Today I have faith, but I can't make any promises about tomorrow. I'm surprised I fell on this road. God, just make me feel like I'm not crazy. God, let me know that I'm not just making friends with these walls when I'm praying. I'm not questioning you. I just got questions. Don't leave me here. If 
your sin, if your secrets, if no one knows about them, your pain and your secrets will break you into pieces. I bleed the block. I lead the flock. My young scholar, he's down to rob everything. I told him, as long as you're under my wing, you'll always be a reigning king. Put down the blocks, put down the rocks. My homeboy, 2016, he lost his life to the pop. Now, he, now he's underneath the ground, six feet deep in a box. I told my little young scholar, I won't leave you, I won't, lead you. I won't lose you to the cops. My God, he flipped my world upside down. They thought I was dead, but he flipped my world upside down like piss on a mattress bed. Ooh. See, the devil thought he had me. Uh -huh. I was speaking to God and still living in fear. Uh -huh. Now I'm using my pain to shuffle my blade on the edge of my spear. Uh -huh. Just consider, maybe it's not rejection, maybe it's redirection. Say it again. Maybe it's not rejection, maybe it's God's protection. Uh -huh. Do you remember? Them nights when your knees hit the altar, face full of salt water, you cry, God, if it's not of you, then take it from me. That's right. So why is it you trying to re-let them? Because they didn't leave you, their time ran out. They didn't leave you, maybe God moved them right out. See, the enemy tried everything. Despair got thrown, I ran into the caves. I thought I'd see better days when Goliath got slain, but even through the pain, I'm still here. Yeah. They got it twisted till it nutted, but it's still here. Uh -huh. See, I wrote this one with you in mind. I'm here to tell you how much God loves you. Cause he been trying to show you, but you still blocking your eyes to his pants on mine. Talk. You still blocking your eyes to his pants on mine. Talk. You see, your eyes look tired. He knows you've been crying. Uh -huh. That bottle getting low. You've been washing your mind. Uh -huh. He sees that you feel abandoned in this season. Broken promises, the ones you trusted in other people. Uh -huh. Begging God to bring them back and take away the feeling. Have you ever cried so much the only way to cope with oh. oh. Talk. Well, wake up. Because every great leader I have ever known has a lot of pain behind it. It is molding you. Yeah. God turns pressure into power. I said God turns pressure into power. You see, it's crying out to God in agony. The cracked Bishop Jake's voice. It is heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak that makes me speak with such authority. I don't judge you by where you are today, but I, my friend, I see the pressure in your life. And queen, I see destiny. I see the pressure in your life. And king, I see legacy. Yeah. Mm. You see the devil thinks he got you locked in the tomb. And he laughs at your demise. But my God says, child, close your eyes. I'm counting to three. Yeah. I serve the Holy Trinity. He saved my life. He took my sins. Threw them out. And yesterday's trash. Yeah. I'm in the field. Preaching to the young souls. Eventually, I mean, we still single, but eventually God will send that man to bring about addition to our lives. But with God, we are already complete. We don't need nobody. We, it's not a half and half thing. It's a whole thing. Right? So when he comes, he's going to find us whole. And when he comes, he, he got to be whole. Right? Yes. So here we go. <laughs> With him, without him. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> With him, without him. They say when you're young, you do not know what love is. Trying to find a meaning, I went out searching. Searching for completion in a man, only to find myself empty yet again. I settled. I settled on my own perception of what I thought was love, blinded by my own insecurities, hoping that you would be the one to save me. But loving you was a letdown. Loving you felt like being brought to the middle of the ocean just so you can watch me drown with every intention of how which you could have used to save me. Every word that flowed through his heart caused my heart to pump, my ears to stand up, and my smile to be endless. To be with him was everything. He befit every vulnerable moment. Moments that sooner turned into memories, that left internal injuries, truth that turned into lies. Never thought that being with him would cause me death. My zeal to life had suddenly died. You 
could have saved me. Saved me from the embarrassment, the bitterness, and the brokenness. But instead, you broke me. I once had hope and love, but you stole from me. The very little hope that I did have. Now that it's over, I sit back and laugh and think to myself, how could I ever believe that that was love? Nowhere in the Bible states that loving someone would lead to pain. But the pain you caused me opened doors. Opened something on the inside of me that I never knew existed. See, to live was no longer purpose, yet burdening. Unable to fathom the completion that I once felt with him was now incomplete. From there, I knew, I understood that our foundation wasn't real. Every substance I attempted to rely on could not stand. All along, what we had was artificial. It is said anything real lasts forever, but with him, I no longer believed in forever. From there, I understood. I knew it was over. But in the end, you saved me. You saved me from me. I have joy now. No more cries at night. No more being incarcerated by your lies because I cut all ties. And it was only a matter of time that I would learn to forgive you. I just refuse to scream your name forever. I just refuse to scream your name forever. You see, without him, I had to move forward. Heart aching, eyes puffed up, appetite lost. But without him, I still remained standing. Though my heart was frail, it was strengthening. You see, they say for every loss is a gain. But without him, I encountered a love I can't explain. To live with him is to die within. Him, my savior. Him, my redeemer. Him, my healer. In order for me to live, I had to let go of you. I put my trust in God to make a way out even when I couldn't see things through. And I have to thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, I would have never knew that God truly restores and makes everything new. My Jehovah Jireh, my Alpha and Omega, my Savior. With him, without him. Are intimately aligned with the divine purpose that victory is a must. So with hands held high, postured like a queen, and claim ownership of what of what already belongs to you. So many journeys with so many stories that can't be kept inside. The brokenness never meant to be harbored, but vividly displayed so the whole world could see how God takes brokenness and makes a masterpiece. Beautiful. Revelation 12 and 11, and they overcame not only by the blood of the Lamb, but by the words of their testimony. Help me clap it up for the overcomer who has allowed her point A to point B to become a story in which she now uses to testify. Filthy pearls are still beautiful even underneath the filth. Beautiful. Woo!